Vessel of Hatred is here and I know most of you are leveling a Spiritborn right now. So today I'm bringing you the best Spiritborn build to level from 1 to 60 and it will also take you to the end game as well. I know you've seen a ton of Quill Volley builds already but this Gorilla Eagle hybrid version is the best for leveling by far. Using aspects all obtainable from dungeons we can scale Quill Volley's damage far better than any other build out there from very early on in the game. We can also spam our ultimate ability multiple times meaning even bosses are dead within seconds. The build also solves vigor issues very early on without any uniques or any RNG aspects so it doesn't feel clunky to play like other quill volley builds out there. We also have a ton of barrier and damage reduction meaning you're never going to die. The movement on this build is also unparalleled to anything I've played. You can zoom across the map so quickly meaning the speed at which you level is nuts. This build is also much, much better than other builds out there for any console or controller player because most other builds out there utilize Saw, which absolutely sucks on controller. I'll place a planner link down in the comments below. So let's go over how the build works. Now the core skill that this entire build revolves around is Quill Volley. Quill Volley is an eagle skill that at base fires five feathers which pierce targets each dealing damage. With enhanced Quill Volley, we can quickly make our enemies vulnerable. Being able to apply vulnerable in the build is super important because we want to trigger our key passive vital strikes as much as possible. Vital strikes gives us more damage, healing and we can generate vigor through it and it solves most of our vigor issues very early on. Then with advantageous quill volley we can increase the number of feathers this ability fires out from 5 to a whopping 8 and they do more damage based on how many hits it does to an enemy. Now there are several methods in this build in which we boost our Quill Volley's damage significantly. The first is Ravager. Ravager is an incredible skill which when activated adds a massive amount of damage to all of your skills and with Enhanced Ravager you can keep the buff going indefinitely. Thanks to Measured Ravager our Quill Volley can also be used to move quickly between packs of enemies and our Vigor Generation is also improved. The second method is through one of the key aspects in this build, Rebounding Aspect, which is obtained from the Forge of Malice dungeon in Nahantu. Rebounding aspect allows Quill Volley's feathers to come back, meaning you get twice the number of hits on enemies. This also means we can trigger Enhanced Quill Volley more, and therefore we trigger Vital Strikes more, and get more vigor back. So sometimes you can keep on spamming Quill Volley without using your basic attack if there's enough enemies nearby. Our third method is another aspect in this build, the aspect of unyielding hits, whereby casting a Gorilla skill boosts the damage of our weapons by up to 30% of our armor. Now I know what you're wondering, isn't Quill Volley an eagle skill? Well, we use the Gorilla Spirit as our primary spirit in this build, which not only adds Thorns damage to our attacks, but lets us have barrier, more resolve stacks, and makes every skill we use a gorilla skill. So now every skill will trigger this aspect. Our ultimate in the build is the Seeker. What this does is it summons a giant eagle which swoops down, deals a bit of damage, and then when it blasts off, it will deal the major portion of damage. The Seeker also makes enemies constantly vulnerable, which means it will constantly trigger vital strikes again and again, and so it becomes an amazing ability to get tons of vigor, allowing you to spam Quill Volley when you use it. Using the Seeker and spamming Quill Volley is an amazing method of taking out bosses very early on. The Seeker is better than the Hunter for leveling builds because we get three charges of the Seeker, which means we can use it multiple times to not only generate vigor, but to deal a ton of damage as well. In this build, we also use Armored Hide, which gives us Resolve passively, which means we gain more damage reduction for free. And when we use it actively, we gain 100% block chance to boost survivability and we become unstoppable. So this is the skill we use to break crowd control effects. Our final skill is Rushing Claw. I love Rushing Claw because thanks to Invasive Rushing Claw, you never run out of charges with it. And because we use the Jaguar Secondary Spirit and we have Ravager's passive ability, you'll never run out of stacks of ferocity. Meaning you can use this skill infinitely to rush from enemy to enemy, speeding up the leveling process by a ton. For controller players out there, this is the superior skill to use in comparison to Saw for movement. Because on a controller, it's way more difficult to target where your Saw is going. So let's go over the skill tree. On the planner, there will be an optimized leveling path as well, so you can follow which skills to put into points first. Start out by putting one point into Thunder Spike and one point into Enhanced Thunder Spike for more vigor generation. Now you should be able to unlock Quill Volley, then go back and get Accelerated Thunder Spikes so your Evade becomes an attack as well. Now get Enhanced and Advantageous Quill Volley. Then put one point into Ravager, one into Enhanced and one into Measured Ravager. 
Go back and max out Quill Volley to 5 out of 5. Now we can unlock Armored Hide and Enhanced Armored Hide, so whenever we are in trouble we can use this ability, break any crowd control and gain tons of damage reduction. We then go back and get Vigorous to 3 out of 3 to boost our Vigor generation. Then we can unlock our main movement ability, Rushing Claw. Get Enhanced and Invasive Rushing Claw as well. Go back and start to max out Ravager. You should then be able to unlock your ultimate ability, the Seeker. Get Harmonious and Exalted Seeker as well. Go back and put 3 points into Balanced Exertion so we get more damage per point of Vigor spent. Then put 1 into Focal Point and then 3 points into Apex to boost damage against vulnerable enemies. At around this time you should be able to put 1 point into your key passive Vital Strikes which helps to solve a ton of Vigor issues. Then we put points into our ultimate ability passives. Put 3 points into resolution, 1 point into spiritual attunement so we can put 3 points into supremacy to boost damage whenever we use our ultimate. Then max out the seeker to 5 out of 5 to both reduce its cooldown and improve its damage. Put 3 points into brilliance and 3 points into acceleration to boost eagle skill damage. Put 1 point into patient guard so we can put 3 points into bastion to add some thorns damage into the build as well. Remember, Gorilla Spirit will apply Thorns damage to all of our skills. Put 3 points into Initiative so our ultimate can also make us unstoppable and break crowd control. Then put 1 point into Mirage so we can put 3 points into Unrestrained Power to boost damage whilst we're unstoppable. Then put 3 points into Resilient to boost life. 1 point into Endurance so we can put our final 3 points into Perseverance for even more damage reduction. For our Spirit Hall, like I mentioned, we use the Gorilla Spirit as our primary spirit and Jaguar as our secondary spirit. In terms of gear and aspects, no uniques are required for leveling purposes. There are three main aspects which I'll go over in order of priority, and they're all obtainable from dungeons. Rebounding aspect is the most important, and I place this on my amulet slot so I can continuously change my weapon whilst leveling to the higher DPS option without thinking too much. Amulets give a 50% bonus to aspect, so it's a good slot for your main aspect. I then place the aspect of unyielding hits on my ring, which is another slot that isn't replaced as much whilst leveling. If at any point you are lacking DPS and you have materials, you could place either of these aspects on your two-handed weapon, which doubles the aspect bonus. Aspect of Disobedience, also obtainable from a dungeon, boosts our armor, which in turn scales our damage through unyielding hits. For your gear, don't worry too much about specific roles whilst leveling. Look out for Dexterity and Maximum Life on your armor, Dexterity, Maximum Life and Vulnerable Damage on your weapon, The whilst leveling just prioritize the higher DPS weapon rather than looking for specific affixes. In terms of gems, put skulls into your jewelry to boost armor to get closer to the armor cap, which will help with survivability but also boost damage because of the unyielding aspect. Put emeralds into armor for more Dexterity and sapphires into your weapons for more vulnerable damage. For runes, don't worry too much about these whilst leveling, I place the chem rune which gives a 75 offering per evade, which we do a lot of whilst running around in this build, and then the gar rune which gives us more critical strike chance. Both of these can be obtained whilst leveling in the campaign. In terms of mercenaries, my hired mercenary is Rahir. This is because one of the passes for Rahir boosts our armor by 15%, which then also works with unyielding hits. Provoke is also a great skill to use because we gain even more damage reduction through this, and then Mocking Lure boosts our damage to taunted enemies. My reinforcement mercenary is Variana, and I went for the Bloodthirst skill which boosts our attack speed, which is a nice buff to gain. And we have it paired with the Quill Volley opportunity, so that's when she uses this ability, which is when we need that attack speed bonus. In terms of Paragon, I will be making an endgame build guide soon on that same planner link. That will be out very soon once I have the gear myself. So there you have it, my Gorilla Eagle Hybrid Quill Volley build. That is an absolute monster for leveling from 1 to 60. Insane damage, insane mobility, and insane survivability. The holy trinity whilst leveling. This to me is the number one leveling build, not only for Spiritborn, but across any class. If you enjoyed what I talked about today, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Diablo builds as we get deeper into Season 6. I'm Mr. Ronit, and that's it for today. Peace out, guys.